In this video, we're going to talk about the future of technology, and that is a blockchain technology. And this year, you're going to see a massive transition in the way the internet works, in the way finance works, and so much more. So you need to know exactly how blockchain technology works if you want to keep up to date with what's happening in the world. Nothing I say on this channel is financial advice. Always do your own research. Let's get into today's video. So what is a blockchain technology? Well, you've probably heard of Bitcoin and Bitcoin came around in 2008, around the time of the global financial crisis. Global financial crisis effectively happened because of a lack of transparency from the banks to everyone else. And the banks were doing some pretty shady things that ultimately caused many people around the world to lose a lot of money, while the bankers still took loads of money. So, well, the bankers still took loads of money in bonuses. This obviously isn't right. So a guy called Satoshi Nakamoto created a blockchain technology in Bitcoin. And blockchain technology is what we have been using in crypto ever since. Now it's revolutionizing the way that many different things work from finance to games and much, much more. Blockchain, sometimes referred to as a distributor ledger technology or DLT, makes the history of any digital asset unalterable and transparent through the use of a decentralized network and cryptographic hashing. That sounds extremely complicated decentralized network. So if you think about a bank is centralized, it's in one place, you put your money in, it's kept within one place. So think about the ledger like a piece of paper. Every time you buy or send money to someone else, that information is stored on this piece of paper or onto the ledger. That can then be tampered with or altered by the bank. You have no access to understand whether they've done that or not. However, the blockchain is slightly different from that. Each block is sort of like that piece of paper. So when you go and make a transaction, it's recorded onto that block. Ultimately, each block will contain, let's say, 100 different transactions. And once that block is full, it will then create another block. And the last transaction from the first one and the first transaction from the next one are then stored on each of the different blockchains. This makes the chain, okay? So the chain of events that happens on all these different blocks. And each time a block is created in a different place, and these blocks can't be altered because obviously you would then alter the last block, but no one has access to all the different blocks, only the one block that's being made at the moment. And this is the revolutionary technology because it doesn't require anyone to come in and alter it, it's automatic. So every time someone's making a transaction, it's happening automatically and people aren't able to come in and hack it, which is what makes it such a revolutionary technology. So why is the blockchain so important? Well, blockchain is an especially promising and revolutionary technology because it helps reduce security risks, stamp out fraud, and being transparent is also scalable. Now you've seen it used for Bitcoin, things like that, as we've talked about. Now we're starting to see it being revolutionized and used in different ways, such as NFTs. An NFT is a non-fungible token. You might think of it as just a picture, but ultimately that picture is linked to the blockchain. That picture is on a unique code that is in the blockchain and it can't be altered in any way which means you can create other ones by like screenshots and stuff but it's not the original token in the same way that you can create another 50 pound note but it's not the same as the original 50 pound note that actually holds a value because of this blockchain technology and being able to create untamperable and being able to create different contracts that can't be altered is extremely powerful because it means you can now create things like passports you can create law contracts, whether that be for like marriage, whether that be for houses, whether that be for anything, that can't be altered. They can't be changed by anyone and they can be seen by everyone. That's extremely powerful and is revolutionizing the way the world works. And, and basically every cryptocurrency has been built on to a blockchain of which there are multiple different blockchains who all serve different purposes. So what effectively is a block? Well, the data is basically the block, okay? The block contains all the different data, like I've talked about that piece of paper or the ledger earlier. The number used only once, a nonce in a blockchain is a whole number that randomly is generated when a block is created, and when then generates a new block header hash. The hash in a blockchain is a number permanently attached to the nonce. The Bitcoin hashes, these values must start with a huge number of zeros. And what basically Bitcoin mining is, which you've probably heard of as well, is the creation of new blocks. So it does take quite a huge amount of computer power to be able to create a new block. And the people who are providing that computer power are then are rewarded in Bitcoin. And this is how new Bitcoin come about. They provide the computer power in order for those transactions to be recorded onto the blockchain. And then those people are paid automatically for producing the blocks. Now we can look here into blockchain uses of which they're pretty much endless. Everything that you know of so far in terms of finance, in terms of retail, 
in terms of the government, all basically relies on a third party. Now, the power of the blockchain is that basically everything can be done autonomously. That means without the input of a third party, which means I can send different transactions to different people around the world without having to have someone in the middle, like a bank, be able to do anything about it. And that's really, really powerful. Because if you ever tried to send money abroad or anything like that, you would realize it's actually quite a complex thing. It can be quite difficult, can be quite expensive and time consuming. And it's not necessarily guaranteed. If we're talking about large sums of money as well, it can also be very difficult to access your own money and do things with it that you actually want to do. Therefore, having a blockchain is incredible because it means I can send money instantly to people around the world and all sorts of different countries. All I need is a wallet. Then people don't know how much money I've been sending. It's all basically anonymous, although the information is stored on the blockchain and you do know the amounts of different wallet transfers. Now, the main benefit of deleting the third party is ultimately brings the cost down. So pretty much for everything you can think of, whether that be website services with new Web3 platforms being built, whether that be gaming with play to earn games where you can go and play a game and you can earn rewards on the blockchain as well is very, very exciting. It's taking away from the centralized authorities who basically have had control over the world and have monopolized various different services over the last like 50 to 100 years. And it's going to absolutely revolutionize the way that everything is done in the future, giving more power back to the individual. And that is extremely exciting and holds so many possibilities going into the future. So is blockchain cryptocurrency? Well, no, it's not quite the same thing. The blockchain is basically the background technology that runs the cryptocurrency. The cryptocurrency is often used as a token or a utility token to interact with the blockchain. So, for example, Ethereum is a blockchain and then Ether is the token that is used on the blockchain. So, for example, if I want to send USDT or US dollar Tether, which is a stablecoin to someone else in another country, I would pay my transaction fees using the Ethereum blockchain in Ether token. Ether token creates a utility for that. If I then wanted to buy an NFT on that, then I might pay on Ethereum, which again is the utility token of that entire blockchain. There's tons of more depth that you can go into on this particular subject. So if you're new to the channel, I recommend you subscribe because we talk about it fairly often and we talk about all the new crypto projects, NFTs, games and much much more on here if you enjoyed today's video and you found it useful guys hit that like button for me thank you so much for doing so and if you're new to the channel and you want to learn more i've just told them to subscribe thanks for watching guys see you in the next video Bye bye